So what is a mutation? Well, a mutation is a permanent change in the DNA of an organism. Okay, mutations can occur because of factors in our own environment, such as chemicals inhaled from smoking or UV light, and these factors are what we call mutagens. However, mutations randomly happen all the time. It's just these mutagens increase the rate of them incur occurring. Quite often, mutations are harmless, but every now and then they can cause serious problems. Ionizing radiation, stuff like UV light, X-rays, gamma rays, can have really damaging effects on your cells. Uh, this is because it transfers energy uh, to the atoms and molecules in the cells, causing them to become ionized or get excited. And one example is something called thymine dimers, uh, which can be formed through ionizing radiation. The energy actually causes two adjacent thymines to link together, causing distortion of the double helix, bad pairing of the opposite strand, it can block DNA polymerase, it affects DNA replication, so it can have serious effects. When DNA gets damaged by ionizing radiation, there are three outcomes. Uh, the damage can be repaired, uh, which is, a, we have a lot of mechanisms in place in our cells to repair damage. The damage could be so serious that it leads to something called apoptosis, which is something which is programmed cell deaths, where the cell self-destructs. Or the damage could cause mutations, so it's not repaired, and the cell doesn't self-destruct, but it causes permanent changes in the DNA, but the cell keeps on uh, living. General repairs to DNA are carried out by a process of nucleotide excision repair. So teams of enzymes detect damaged DNA, um, nuclease enzyme cuts and removes the damaged DNA, DNA polymerase and fills in the gaps, and DNA ligase uh, seals the new and the old sections together. So these are kind of running general DNA repairs that go on. You'll also probably remember back to the cell cycle that there are particular checkpoints in the cell cycle where DNA can be repaired, and these are carried out by particular enzymes called exonuclease enzymes. Okay, but as I said, sometimes DNA damage can accumulate or be so serious that the cell self-destructs, and this is called apoptosis. The cell forms blebs when it, uh, when it goes through this process. It, it, uh, these little bits blebbing, uh, it's called, these little bits of cytoplasm start coming off, it starts breaking apart, and the fragments end up getting ingested by phagocytes. Apoptosis is a very important process because it can stop a cell becoming cancerous. It's good, it's important for cells to be able to do this. We don't want a cell to become cancerous if we can avoid it, obviously. When lots of DNA is damaged, a protein is produced in large quantities called the tumor suppressor protein, or P53. So when lots of DNA gets damaged, you get lots of this tumor suppressor protein. This protein normally controls cell division, but when it's activated in large quantities like this, it binds to DNA and increases the expression of various proteins which lead to apoptosis. So lots of P53 is what ends up causing apoptosis to occur. Mutation of the gene that codes for p53, though, is the most common mutation seen in cancer. If this protein function is reduced, so if the mutation um, causes less p53 to be produced, then apoptosis doesn't occur, rapid cell division occurs instead, tumor formation happens, and cancer develops. Another common mutation in cancer is that of uh, proto-oncogenes, which then become activated oncogenes. There are around 40 different proto-oncogenes in humans, which all have certain roles to do with controlling cell division. Um, but when they get mutated to oncogenes, cell division is not controlled, and this leads to cancers forming. Gene mutations, also known as point mutations, usually occur when a nucleotide isn't properly copied during transcription or as discussed due to exposure from a mutagen. So looking now specifically at what can actually happen um, to DNA in a mutation. Now there are three different types of point mutation, substitutions, deletions, or insertions. Mutation can lead to altered primary structure of a protein because if you're changing the base sequence, you change the amino acids and then you change the primary structure, but that then can completely change the final 3D shape and the function of a protein in the end. Mutation could also just cause the uh, codon to become a stop codon, so you can actually prematurely um, stop uh, translation and the polypeptide would be again completely changed. So just going through those three types quickly. Substitution is when one base is changed for another. 
um, uh, not that serious uh, substitution usually, um, can alter a maximum of one amino acid. It's only ever gonna change one amino acid and quite often it has no effect even though it changes the codon um, because of the degenerate genetic code. Um, it just codes for the same amino acid. This is called a silent mutation. Deletion, a base is removed from the sequence. Now this can be very serious because depending on how it, far into the gene this occurs, um, all the amino acids from that point on are going to be different because they're all going to be shifted up one. So um, all the, the bases will be shifted up one or the way that their red will be in their codons. And so every single one after that is going to be different. So you have a completely different amino acid um, sequence. Insertion, again, can be very serious. Insert an extra um, uh, base in there, then we're gonna change all the amino acids from that point onwards again. It's called a frame shift. We're gonna change the whole lot, okay? One example that you may remember that we need to talk a little bit about is the CFTR gene. It came up in topic 1.1 and it codes for a particular transmembrane protein. Um, normally, the protein regulates chloride transport and it controls the viscosity of the mucus produced by epithelial cells by determining how much chloride ions and therefore sodium ions and therefore water is in the mucus. Now this is CFTR gene, which codes for this membrane protein is found on chromosome seven and it can be mutated. And when it gets mutated and the, this transport protein doesn't work properly anymore, it can lead to cystic fibrosis, the disease. Now the protein is normally made of 1,480 amino acids and there are over 500 known mutations. Now, depending again on how, what the mutation is, where it occurs in the, the gene, then different symptoms can occur. So uh, it's an example here of how slightly different mutations are gonna cause slightly different changes to that protein structure. Some may have serious effects on how that protein, transmembrane protein works. Some will have um, smaller effects and therefore can cause different symptoms uh, in the disease at the end. Another example of a condition caused by point mutation is sickle cell anemia. Uh, this is um, caused by a base substitution, which means that one amino acid changes in, uh, in a chain that is used to make beta hemoglobin. So in this case, there's 147 amino acids um, in this polypeptide, but the mutation causes one of them to change. It changes to glutamic acid to valine. So only small change, but that one amino acid causes the whole nature of the protein to change. The hemoglobin ends up starting to stick together. And if it does that, it makes these really long rods. And therefore that completely distorts the sh nice biconcave shape of our red blood cells. And they become sickle shaped. Um, and that is why it's called sickle cell anemia. They can then block blood vessels uh, and um, cause uh, lots of issues with carrying oxygen around the body. As usual, there are extension questions in this section, so have a read of these and do a bit of research to learn a bit more about genes and protein synthesis.